randomness. Now, when I when I actually did these notes on randomness, um, yeah, I didn't. I don't know exactly how helpful this these first seven are, but they do help with some vocabulary. So let's go through these first seven, and I'll guide you through them since you haven't read the chapter yet, and your homework is to read the chapter. But we'll get information on it before we start. Okay. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to identify the component that needs to be repeated. So that's the very, very most basic item. If you were making three free throws in basketball, which is what we're going to be talking about, then what's the basic component in shooting a free throw? Yes, a hit or miss of your one shot. So one free throw shot. You know, so an example here would be your one free throw shot, okay? Your one free throw. Okay, explain, then you are going to explain how you model that outcome. So that is what goes here. When we just were talking about our random number generator and seating our calculator, how did we model uh, heads and tails? Good. We said zero represented heads and one represented tails. So could we do the same thing here? We could do a hit or miss, okay? Say if it was a 50-50 chance, then we could model it with zero, one, okay? Um, so I'll, we could put a little example here. A zero could represent heads and a one could represent tails, okay? Ex then next you would explain how you're going to simulate the trial. So we would say something like, I'm going to run a random, random number generator and I'm going to, each number represents a flip of the coin. Okay? State clearly what the response variable is. Now this is part of your vocabulary and your vocabulary cards, but we're talking through those. Response variable is the thing that happens. That's kind of like your outcome and your response. In math, okay, so think equations now. In math, we generally put what into, into the equation. What's the input? X's or Y's? X's. X's go in. Okay? So those are our explanatory variable because those are explaining and going in and explaining what's happening. And then what comes out of it is usually our Y which in this case, it's going to be our response to what went in. So our outcome are, is our response variable. Okay? We're going to run several what, do you think? We're going to run several trials. And again, the number of trials that will um, be most representative of the entire population of trials. Remember when we talked um, bear hunt, we said the more the better. Whenever we were talking about how many trials should we come up with, well, we're going to come up with that number later on in this year. Um, then we will analyze what variable do you think we're going to analyze? It's the same thing. We're going to analyze that response that happened and look at that response. We're going to analyze that response. And then we're going to state our conclusion. Okay. No, thank you. Okay, so then we'll state our conclusion. Um, what did I put there? That happened in the trials or the results of the problem. Okay. All right. So now we're going to actually go into a real situation. Okay? So let's talk this situation. This is the type of thing you're going that I need you to be skilled at doing. Creating a simulation is the main goal of this chapter. Understanding randomness and understanding the vocabulary. But being able to be given a situation to create a simulation that somebody else could reproduce the, re the results of or could reproduce that simulation. Okay. Here we go. Suppose a basketball player has an 80% free throw success rate. How can we use random numbers to simulate whether or not she makes a foul shot? How many shots might 
she be able to make in a row without missing? And it tells us to conduct 20 trials. So what would a component represent? The most basic little piece in our simulation that maybe a number of our number generator would represent. A f one free throw shot. So the action that is occurring is a free throw shot. Okay. What are our possible outcomes and how are we going to define them and collect that data? Our, outcome, our possible outcomes are going to be hit or miss, but how can we represent that with an 80% free throw average? Yes. Eight, good, 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 good. That's good thinking. Eight, the response was eight is made. Eight are made and two are not. Good. Um, so how could we use our random number generator and simulate that? You have to run the trials, okay. Well, but how does the calculator know what numbers to pick from and then how do you know which numbers represent a hit and which numbers represent a miss? Okay, but we have 80%. Zero and one would be 50-50 chance. Okay, good. One to 10. One to 10 is our first instinct, okay. But let's just do single digits. So what if I said zero to seven how many digits are those? There's eight of them. Okay, so that's our 80%. So if, if we get a 0 to a 7, then we can assume that that represents, oops, that doesn't represent a miss, that represents a, a hit. So then what would represent a miss if the random number generator came up with a 8 or a 9, came up with an 8 or a 9? So an 8 and a 9 represent a miss. Okay, you have to do that specific writing of defining what your number generator is going to represent. Okay, so then here we have trials, and so guess what? We're going to perform 20 trials. I'm going to give you an example of two of them, and then I'm going to let you actually collect some data and do the other one. So let's do trial number one and trial number two. So we would probably, on your paper and on your AP test, you would make yourself a little table and you would say, okay, this is our trial number. Okay, here's a trial number. And here we're going to put our results. And then over here, this is going to be our outcome. Okay, so we'll do that in a minute. Now, what, what is our response variable? What is this? This outcome represents hit or misses, but there's something else. What, what is our response going to be? What response are we looking for? It's up here in the, up here in the paragraph. What is our goal to look for when we punch numbers? How many she makes in a row without missing? Right here. So this here, okay, so this right here will, so, so my response variable is how many she makes in a row without Oh, you know what? That was bad. I should not have abbreviated like that because I sh don't want to get in the habit of abbreviating. We want to have good tuxedo quality write-ups all the time. And I have to make myself do that without a miss. 
Okay, so let's do two trials. Our results are going to be our statistics that we come up with. Here we go. Ready? Get, we'll do mine, and then you can do the rest of the trials. We'll do mine for the first two. Oh, man, that made that go away. I hate it when that happens. Okay, so I'm going to go math over to probability, my random integer. Now, how am I going to do this in here? Zero to nine. Um, okay. And I don't care about how many in a row. So here's the first throw. You ready? Okay, boom. Got it. So made it. Made it. Made it. Made it. Yeah, this is a class. So this is going to be trial number one. We're going to all do it together. And we're going to do trial number two all together. And then you're going to do three through 20 on your own. Okay? Made it, made it, made it, made it. Oh, missed. So... What we should all write is that for trial number one, our results were a hit, a hit, a hit, four, one, three, two, and then eight. So our outcome was, you're using mine for the first two. So what's our outcome? Four. Good. Four is the outcome. Why? Because four is how many I got in the row before I missed. Okay. Okay. Correct. How many she makes in a row before she misses. And then the outcome is how many that was. Okay. Ready? I'm going to start my second trial right now. Here I go. I'm about to hit on my calculator again. Okay. Yes. Oh, really? Okay. You can do it on the way out. Okay. I hit. Oh, and then I missed. Shoot. So for my trial number two, so for my trial number two, it went four and then it went eight. So, what's my outcome? Okay. I want you to do that on your personal calculator for trials 3 through 20, and then I want you to come up with your entire average outcome. If you need room, that's fine. If you need it on another piece of paper or just whatever. Okay, so I'll let you do that. Okay, I put something in the wrong place. So just watch this and you may have to draw an arrow. On this word trial, what I really should have done is described what one trial would be representing. And so <clears throat> that would have been use a random number generator and select one number. It sure isn't. That's not tuxedo quality. Okay. But I'm already boo-booed, and so I'm going back and fixing it, and so, you know, yeah. Okay, so use a random number generator. So that's what I would have put there, and this was fine. And <clears throat> this right here, this would have been where I would have collected my information. That's why there's more space there. So I would have had one trial, two trials, and then I would have put my information that I had, my results and my outcome, okay, that we had previously had. So I, so there was a little bit more space there. Now, our statistic, what do you think our statistic's going to be? That's your average, good. So a statistic is not just one piece of data, it's a collection of data and something that you calculate from your data. And so our statistic, in fact, if you looked at your vocabulary card, that would have described something like that. So our average, or you could say mean, our, my, my personal one was 3.1. I don't know what yours was. But my personal average. So what is that saying? So that's how we're going, what we're going to write in our conclusion. So how could we write an appropriate conclusion? How about I even start with some of the specifics up here for a player with 
an 80% free throw average. I would expect, and this is your wiggle word, I would expect, okay, that's not saying it's definitely going to happen. That's you saying based on your simulation what you would expect to happen. I would expect um, her to get approximately, another good wiggle word, 3.1 shots in a row before a miss. Yep. Okay, but it's a thorough conclusion. We know what she, what she started with, what she did, and what my statistics were. Okay. All right, so there's one all the way through. Baby stepping you through it. Now let's see if we can go through the other ones a bit faster. I will um, shortcut some of it so it won't all be tuxedo quality because we want to get through all of those. Okay, here we go. Number two. How will a simulation change, a procedure change, if the success rate was only 72% rather than 80%? Okay, if you did 0 to 6 for your random integer, that's 70%, not 72%. What if you did what? Very good. So she's now thinking, because we have two places that we have to be accurate to, you're now doing it for two digits. So our component is the same. Our outcomes would be this, 0, 0 to 71 represents a hit because how many, how many numbers is that? 72 numbers, okay. And then what is the rest of this? 72 to what? 99, so these are all then two-digit things, represents a miss. So how would that look in your calculator just, we would go random integer, 0 to 99, 0, 0 to 99, and then how many numbers are going to come up at a time? Do I need to say two come up at a time so that I get both digits? No, no I don't. No. I just say 0 to 99. I don't even have to, I don't even think I have to put 0, 0. But 0 to 99. And then it'll come up with a number and I know it's either, you know, whatever. If it's between 0 and 71, so I probably didn't even need this here. If it's between 0 and 71, then that's a hit. Okay. All right. So what's our response variable? Was, is that the same? Are we still looking for the number of shots she makes in a row before she misses? Okay, so that's all the same. So this is all the same. All this is the same. In fact, all of it's the same, but wouldn't we expect this to be different? Because Why would we expect this to be different after we ran 20 trials? Yeah, because her percentage is now 72% rather than 80%, we'd expect our um, statistic to be different, but everything else is the same. So let's not run that trial let, or that experiment. Let's go on. Questions there? Okay. Okay, i got to fix that. Next. How would a trial, and oh, so here's a different situation. How would a trial and our response variable change if we wanted to know how many shots she might make out of five chances she would get at a crucial point in the game. So there's a crucial point. She's going to be making five things. How would that, what would that do for us? 
let's, you know what, for simplicity's sake, let's go back to, let's go back to um, 80%. This is going to just, because we're, we're not, we don't want to add that difficulty in there. Not that it's, I mean, it's just a little more technical. Um, so we want to know how many she gets, might make out of five chances. So our outcome is going to be, so our component is still one shot. Our outcome is back to the, Zero to seven is a hit, and eight and nine are miss. Okay, so but what would a trial be if we are trying? The thing says we want to know how many shots she might make out of five chances. Correct. So one complete trial is five numbers. You know, use a random number generator, use a random number generator, and get five numbers. So, you know what I might do is I might go like this in my calculator. Random integer, zero to nine, throw up five at a time. Because I want to see how she did on those five shots at a time. Um, what would my response variable be? Previously, it had been the number of shots she makes in a row before a miss. But what's my response variable now? Correct. How many shots she makes out of five? And it says it right here. If we want to know how many shots she makes out of five. So that's our response variable. How many shots? made out of five. Good. And then our results and our conclusion and all that kind of stuff. So just let me show you what that would look like on our calculator. <coughs> yep. Yep. So random manager, zero, nine, five. And watch what it looks like. See? There's her five things. So how would I record this in my table? My response variable, what would the number be for my response variable? Four. Because she made four shots out of five. Good. Here's another five shots. Here's my second trial. How many did she make? Three out of five. My third trial, four out of five, and so on. Okay? All right. Number four. How would a trial and our response variable change if we want to know her chances of hitting both shots when she goes to a line to shoot two? Okay, does our component change? It's still one shot. Our component is still one shot. Our outcomes, it's still 80% chance of getting it. Okay, so that's the same. How does our trial change? And um, let's see. I'm thinking our trial is going to be how many shots? I think it's going to be two shots. Yeah. I think so. I mean, when I put this in my calculator, this is not how I would describe it on the a AP test. But on my calculator, I'm thinking I'm going to be doing this. Random integer, zero to nine. I'm shooting two at a time, and then I'm going to see what's my response variable going to be. So one trial is two shots. My response is going to be how many, sh um, what does it say? We want to know her chances of hitting both shots. Um, so since it's saying her chances of hitting both shots, then my response should be her chances of hitting both shots. Okay, so I would say how many how many shots she made, and then my statistic is going to be giving me that percentage chance. Okay, <clears throat> so it's going to flash two at a time, and then I'll know. 
questions there? Sarah. Um, because a component is the most basic piece that one number represents. Each each action. The trial is the, the two shots. So so one trial is her going to the free throw line. Then later she gets fouled again. Her second trial is going to the free throw line again and shooting two shots. And so on. Okay? All right. So now let's do um, the last one and see how this would change. If we want to know her score in a one and one situation. Okay. So what that means is here she tries the first shot and she only gets the second shot if she makes the first one. So how would we run that? Our component, what is our component? It's still going to be one shot. Our outcome is going to still, we're at the 80%, so our outcome is still going to be a 0 to 7 represents a hit and 8 and 9 is a miss. Okay, and, and that, see that outcome is based on that information that we got that it's an 80% probability. Okay, but what does a trial look like? One single trial, what would that look like? That's her going to the free throw line for a one and one shot. What's it look like? Correct, okay. Plus, that's going to change our response variable. Okay, so look, so that's going to be the same as above. So it's going to be, so your trial, I would probably look at two shots, but only count the second shot. So only count that second shot number if what? If the first one was made if the first shot was made. All right. Follow that? So we might even do this one. But what's our response variable? Because for some reason I think it was saying her score. So when I do my response variable, is each free throw is a point? Yes, okay, each free throw is a point. Okay, so our response variable is going to be the point the points made in each what? Trial. In each trial. And and how many is that going to be? Either zero, one, or two. It could be zero, one, or two. Because zero excuse me, zero if she missed the first one. One if she Got the first one, but missed the second one, and two if she got them both. Okay. Let's try that one. <clears throat> so when I put this in my calculator, I'm going to go random. Zero to nine. Throw up two. <laughs> Throw up two. Okay. So what happened on the first shot? She missed the first shot, so don't even count the second. So when I record my outcome, what is my result, my response variable? How many? Zero, Zero points. Good. Okay, what's this one? Six, four. Okay, so she makes the first one. Hold on just a second. She made the first one, so that's one point. So I go to the second one, and did she make the second one? Yeah. Yes, so that's two. So, so we got, so we're, our response variable we record here would be two points. Okay, got it. Good. All right. <clears throat>